We are going down the west side of the highlands. The landscape changes dramatically. The mountains give way to enormous valleys covered in conifers and pine trees, more like the forests of the Mediterranean and not these equatorial regions of Oceania. We are going to see the mummies of the Enga or Kuku Kuku, that is the name normally given to these people who live on the plains of the Aseki River. High up in the mountains where there is no vegetation, in a natural shelter which the natives call the sacred rock, the Enga mummies stand silently watching over the lives of the Kuku Kuku. Cannibalism has always been common practice among the Kuku Kuku, and it is this that has made them legendary. They ate thieves and prisoners of war after fattening them up. Charles Higginson was the first white man to come in contact with them in 1907. He described them as fierce cannibalistic warriors, always ready to start a war with a neighboring tribe. Leaders and warriors who died in battle were mummified. The body was placed in the fetal position in the kitchen and a fire was lit to smoke it. When it began to smell, the wives would rip the skin off and tear out the intestines, which were eaten by the closest relatives in order to acquire the qualities of the deceased. Then they continued smoking the body for four or five months until the flesh was totally dried out. It would then be taken up to the sacred rock and placed in a sitting position looking into the distance or in a type of bamboo basket which they nailed to the ground. Other tribes left them hanging from the trees. Very few Kuku Kuku now mummify their dead, but they have lost none of their warlike nature and tribal conflicts are still frequent. Cannibalism has almost entirely died out. Though there are still isolated cases of human flesh being eaten in the most remote regions. We must understand that for these warriors just 15 or 20 years ago, cannibalism was perfectly normal. The land where the Kuku Kuku live is very rugged and covered in jungle, but even here we find representatives of the most radical religious sects from the West. They are everywhere. In Papua there are over 100 different churches. They started coming in the 50s when in Papua New Guinea there were still around 2 million natives living practically in the Stone Age. This was a valuable prize. Missionaries from the different sects came with their Western beliefs and gods, frantically vying with each other to convert the heathens. Tragically, this has led to the loss of ancient customs and ways of life. Look at me, me but fly, fly. 